So it's nearly Christmas and what does Christmas mean? Yes, houses covered in tacky lighting and decoration. Um, around where I live there are some sort of fairly spectacularly uh, tacky displays. But one house I noticed um, had something different. From a distance it just looked like it was an array of green lights which I thought you know on the first glance I thought maybe it was one of those sort of mesh lights or something but on a closer look I realized that no this was actually something being projected onto it so, so on closer inspection it turned out that there was it was basically a laser projector sort of projecting well, in this case it was just a static array of green and a few red dots so I thought hmm, that's interesting I've not seen that before turns out I'd subsequently seen a few more so this does look like it's a fairly popular thing but th that, that was the first time I saw it so I had a look on the um, uh, on eBay and found what it was and um, ordered one thought it was uh, might be interesting to take a look at so uh, what turned up was this so this is a different one this is actually a moving pattern whereas the uh, the other one was a static um, pattern which I think actually the static ones look, look, look nicer and this is a stars shover laser light I suspect they probably meant shower but the typo uh, got in there no ladders no hanging no dead bulbs no mess uh, it's nice in print when you know you can light up our house just by plonking this thing uh, in the gardens quite quite a nice idea ETL Intertech approvals, yeah, I don't think so. We'll, um, I haven't even opened this up yet, but I can just tell by looking at it that this is going to have uh, minimal safety. Um, laser classification, class 3R, maximum power output less than 3 milliwatts, 532-650. So both this one and the one I saw had both green and red, but the red is so dim that you know it's very barely noticeable, mainly because the uh, eye has much less sensitivity to red, but also just seems to be a lot less red the sort of fewer red dots just to ma maximize the um, intensity and so it comes with this uh, this sort of stake so you literally just stick it in the garden you sort of put this screw in stick it in the garden point it and away you go Just please do not remove laser warning level or attempt to open the housing the removal warning label and housing will void all warranties well um what what warning um i get the distinct impression that this is the 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 cheap as you know the, the sort of second generation knockoff make this damn thing as cheap as we can version and um, i think we'll see on i have not even owned it yet but i did get this it, it's exuding cheap cheapness and crapness and so here it says two laser modes and on here it says a built-in light sensor now obviously that makes sense for night operation but i'm pretty sure this doesn't have the light sensor or the two modes so i think this is the uh the somewhat cheapened version it projects this sort of interesting sort of multiple diffraction pattern in sort of green and red and on, on a surface that's not flat you get some interesting sort of dynamic effects so it's, it's, it's a bit too light in here and it, it works quite well at night but uh in here you can just about see it but you know, obviously the different angles and so on produce some sort of quite interesting effects but so i, I do prefer the static effect but this one uh, and that's it no evidence of any labeling light sensors or anything else i'll just attempt to get a laser power reading this is not going to be super accurate because although this is calibrated for 532 there probably is going to be some infrared in there but also i can't quite get into the obviously we're, yeah we're trying to sort of capture multiple beams and they're probably diverging a bit too much before they hit the sensor but that's yeah that's reading four milliwatts which is probably already over their three milliwatt spec but uh, we sort of expected that and i have that have no doubt that that output will vary quite substantially over temperature now for something that's designed to be used outdoors yeah the first disappointment is this thing's got a sealed in cable and it's a stupidly short cable and you'd have to you know have that in a socket in some sort of outdoor waterproof box you know for something that's outdoors yeah not only is the cable stupidly short but it's not even easy to extend you know if they use like a usb on here this end they at least you could extend it and sort of take around it get a vaguely safe thing so i'm sure a lot of people are going to be using unsafe outdoor mains connections for this the other thing is i mean this power supply is rated nominally um five volts at one amps but it's the lightest five volt power supply i've ever found i mean there's i suspect this is going to be one of those one transistor specials on a um sort of bonded paper pcb uh, actually let's let's crack this open now and have a look I don't, uh, yeah that opens uh, nice and easily um i suppose the mains isolation is less of an issue here than for usb things in that you know this thing is actually sort of insulated or obviously that's not mains rated wire so it's slightly less of an issue and obviously if this is outdoors it's possibly slightly less likely to burn your house down actually slightly more in here than i expected but not much it's a full wave rectifier rather than a half wave actually it's surprising there's actually an opto isolator so there's even a primary secondary cap that's sort of 2.2 2.2 nanofarads at 1 kV but that clearly isn't a safety rated capacitor it's on this sort of cheapo 
uh, bonded paper PCB, there's a position for a lead that they've not fitted, and the isolation distance. For some reason they've actually taken the resist off here, but then this is your, your input to our output isolation distance is this, which is about sort of two millimetres, so it's it's actually not quite the worst one I've seen, but it's uh, up there. And this, this PCB just feels, I mean, it looks it's sort of really thin and flexible. It just feels like the cheapest PCB material I've ever come across. And the capacitors are made by that famous company, Hinkders. Ever heard of those? Um, transformer looks pretty much like an audio transformer. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like the output. There is actually some output regulation. We've just got the Zener and a um, into the opto isolator. And I was a little surprised to even see an opto coupler there, but two transistor front end. So pretty. Yeah, it's, it's about the lightest one, but actually not quite the crappiest, but pretty close. And needless to say, no hint of any filtering at all. So there's no way this complies with uh, EMC regs. It's just. Uh, cheapest possible piece of junk oh yeah also no fuse I think this perhaps is maybe intended to be the fuse this bit of PCB track so um, yeah not great me buy of course this wire is that this crappy stuff which I think is actually um, just feels really nasty and sort of springy I suspect it's probably um, copper coated aluminium yeah the silver showing through so this is a uh, Nasty copper coated aluminium wire, and all that supplied with a one amp power supply. It's only actually drawing 180 milliamps. Of course, I doubt for a second that this thing could actually supply one amp anyway. But put this way in its proper storage position. Interesting, this thing really does need five volts because even going down to about 4.8, <coughs> it just cuts out. So uh, maybe that, perhaps that's why they use such a short power lead. So they, maybe they tried a longer lead and found it just didn't work because of the voltage drop on the crappy uh, power supply cable. So and this thing just feels like every corner has been cut. It's got this sort of crappy paper label with creases that hasn't been put on straight. There's no other markings. The cable entry seal, they just splodge some hot melt glue on there and the plastic just feels like the cheapest nastiest plastic yeah it just it just feels extremely cheap and extremely nasty thin plastic uh, window on the front let's uh, open this up actually that looks it looks like maybe it does actually screw on to try turning it but it didn't seem to want to go yeah this sort of yeah it sort of screws stroke falls off and on it does appear to be a gasket here it's like a sort of soft soft gasket there's actually oh, that's surprising this front is actually glass not plastic that is a bit of a surprise and it's got on here what I assume is a diffraction grating of some sort and in here we've got the uh, the gut so we've got a if we just turn the voltage down the lasers don't turn on but the motor does does come on so you can see we've got this rotating section in the front motor driving it here this whole thing just on a fairly flimsy plastic bracket Actually, the inside looks slightly less crappy than the, the outside, so um, let's get this out and take a look. And I say internally, it actually looks quite a lot nicer than I was expecting. The um, incoming power cable is just connected to this JST cable, surprisingly with heat shrink. Obviously, they're using probably off-the-shelf connectors rather than actually getting this properly crimped into the connector. But we've actually got, you know, connectors going in rather than just being soldered. Sort of fiberglass PCB. Well, they didn't bother taking the um, the tooling bar off, but that's not a huge issue really. And we have two lasers. I'm guessing that's going to be a DPSS green, judging by the size, and then a red diode going to this beam splitter to combine the, um, the two colours. Then out through this rotating diffraction grating, and then through this second grating here, 
to produce the two patterns. So uh, let's just fire this up. Right, so you can see this is the, the pattern with the first grating. And then by adding the second one, we get a much more interesting pattern. So it would be nice to actually have the option to just turn the motor off and just unplug the motor. So that just gives you a sort of fairly square static pattern. And the second grating, so as I just manually rotate these to each other, you just get the diffraction in multiple directions, depending on the relative angles of the two, uh, two gratings. If we measure the power right here, we've got about 113 milliwatts, but that may be being significantly skewed by infrared content. I'd be highly surprised if there wasn't significant infrared coming out of this as well, but obviously because it's being spread out, it's, yeah, it's a lot less hazardous than a, um, a la yeah, equivalent laser of that power because it's being spread out fairly quickly. The actual power on in any individual beam is um, limited, but that is, yeah, that is pretty bright. Now, unless there are some unpopulated parts, which I suspect might be to do with the version that has the light sensor, there's a connector here and provision for a uh, transistor. I'm not quite sure what that's for. And what's this chip? And what on earth? According to the markings, that's a 24CO2 E squared prom. Now, I mean, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. There's nothing to talk to that. I think we might need to investigate that a bit further. And that is utterly bizarre. Unless it's mismarked, maybe it's deliberately mismarked or something. I, I really don't know. I mean, this thing doesn't actually need really any, any you know, it just needs the um, the drivers for the laser. So I cannot imagine why they would stick an E squared prom in there. I mean, it can't possibly have any function. Now I've just taken that um, that chip off. Now this footprint here. It looks like it's connected to what seems a transistor here driving something external. Now my best guess is that maybe that's an option where it can turn the motor, yeah, control the motors to get different effects. Um, there was a yeah, so there was a version that was mentioned that yeah, the, there are switchable effects, so maybe there's a button or something that, that cycles through different motor effects, so maybe it's motor on, motor off, and maybe there's like a ramping up and down type thing. And so I think it probably is a micro because you look there's these five pads here that go to these pads here which will be for programming so I think that's probably the most likely explanation of that but why they would just stick a 24 co2 e squared problem on there I just really don't have a clue it just makes makes no sense whatsoever and yet with this in circuit it's not as if maybe this is a different chip and doing something else because I mean most of the um, most of the pins are just going to unpopulated components so um, that is weird you know the, okay fine you know this board as it stands make perfect sense because you've got you know different build options but why you would then just fit a, you know, almost like a random chip to it that has no function just makes no sense whatsoever unless it's just maybe something ridiculous like they're trying to spot people doing direct clones by putting unnecessary parts on there but that just seems a bit even for the Chinese that seems a bit ridiculous um, the other odd thing which suggests to me almost that maybe this is perhaps a cut a design that's been cut and pasted for something else is there's quite a few vias that don't actually go you know, go anywhere there's sort of for example up here if you look here there's no you know, there's no connection to about six vias there there's an unconnected via on that side of the PCB and it's also you know, unconnected there and there's sort of what looks like former leftovers of vias there so um, that's very odd you know this is just a very hastily you know taking one design stripped the parts off and just not even bothered deleting the vias before getting the PCBs made that's uh, <laughs> I've never seen that before it's very bizarre you can also there's a few vias here these just linking the two grounds but can't really see they actually serve any purpose. For example, there, that's all there and there. We've got provision where, where there clearly were, was something, and they just didn't re-pour the um, the copper afterwards. That's uh, very peculiar. Let me just take this front motor unit off. Just measure the green on its own. 
that's showing 112 milliwatts uh, if I put this through a, uh, an infrared pass filter so we should just be measuring the um, infrared content now that's showing 72 but that's going to be calibrated for 532 so we just change the waveform setting on this to um, it's probably most it's probably going to be 1064 and I've done I, I've gone into this um, a lot there's another video where I took a look at this in more detail in how the um, infrared contact tent will skew the reading on a laser power meter because when you select wave for length on this all it's doing is it's selecting the calibration the calibration factor on the assumption that it's seeing a single wavelength coming in but of course it isn't so the reading's always going to be high if it's got a mixture of wavelengths so that's set to 1064 so if we now again run that through the filter so that's now reading uh, about seven milliwatts so I mean, you, you wouldn't really want to stare at that all day, but it's not sort of crazily unsafe. And if I just run this through a prism and shine it over here, you can see there's, we've only got the green showing here, but if we look at this on a, um, a monochrome camera that has some infrared sensitivity, we can see that secondary infrared spot to the right, but it's not, you know, not ridiculously strong. Okay, I think I made the mistake of plugging that red laser in while the bulb was powered up and it seems to have toasted so uh, it wasn't that impressive anyway so uh, can't really do anything with that but that wasn't, yeah, the red one was a bit disappointing. Now um, I'm quite surprised to see the actual lead drivers of these buck regulators and these are PT4115 which are basically step down lead driver designed for driving sort of uh, 1 to 3 watt leads. Obviously the laser diode wants a sort of constant current, so that's yeah, a reasonably good fit. But so I was a little bit surprised that they just didn't use you know, linear regulators on this to burn off the power. Slightly uh, less crappy inside than I was expecting. The motor is just as expected, just a simple train of gears full of grease and gunk running this uh, hollow gear for the uh, that grating. So, um, interesting little gadget, quite a nice cheap way of painting a big uh, pattern over the house. So this one I think, um, I don't particularly like this one because it's, uh, you can't turn the motor off. It, uh, I'd sooner have one that's yeah, got the, actually got the light sensor that they claim on the package and also so you could um, so you just have a static pattern because I think that, that looks nicer. But um, of course the other part of Christmas decorations is, is sort of getting one up on your neighbour and doing things differently. So how about if we take this and maybe attach it to a multi-line argon laser. 